we are gathered here together for another installment of the reserve list top 10. These are the hottest selling cards on the reserve list this week from February 26th to March 1st of 2024. And when I say sales, some of these numbers are phenomenal. I wonder who's buying all these cards and for what reason. Let's check this out. Welcome back fans of the reserve list and of course all the other amazing Magic the Gathering players out there who have for some reason decided to tune in and check out the content with your host MTG Mox. Man, if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you want to support the channel other ways, you can just use my TCG affiliate link. It's found in the description of this video. It helps the channel a lot. Thanks again, everyone. We're going to start and drop into number 10 right away. Revised volcanic island that's right guys 42 sales starts out our list this week which is a total sales volume of twenty eight thousand three hundred and seventeen dollars and fourteen cents and what are we talking about this thing still has an average price tag of six hundred and seventy four dollars and twenty two cents but here's the real kicker it's not the near mint as usual we've noticed that this is not so much a seller's market as it is still a buyer's market but the buyers want the real deal and they want it at a bargain basement price so the sales we are seeing are happening into the damaged heavily played and of course moderately played copies not the near mint not the gradable investable ones that people used to think were like the top dogs to get this is not speculation this is people wanting the deal they want the cards at a good price. Let's go ahead and check out number nine. Now, here we have Yogg Moss Will. This is from Urza's Saga. I remember this thing being like a $10 card before the buyouts of 2020. And of course, it is a phenomenal card. 46 sales this week, $7,819.54 in sales volume. This thing's really come down a long way from where it used to be, but it's still higher than most people feel comfortable with. Now, the average price being $169.99. There's also that Judge promo one out there. For cards like this, I'll be honest, I remember being a $10 card, so I have a hard time visualizing it when it was up to like that four or $500 level. So even at less than $200 US, it seems like a deal, but I actually think this card has further to fall. So if you wait a little bit longer, if you've got the patience, you might see this card fall below 150. So keep your eye on it because the players are not usually buying this card. I think this is just a blip on the map. Now our number eight card doesn't have a lot of value. It came to my attention because Retro MTG, who helps with some of the numbers, sent it my way. I looked into some other sales, and it's pretty impressive. This card got 58 sales. Not a lot of total sales volume, though. $110 next to nothing. This card averages only $1.90. So why is it even on the list? Well, it's the total sales volume, because this card... Does it have playability? I have used it in the past, I'll be honest. Let me explain. This thing's a 1-1 one, one for one blue, one generic that says, whenever Talarian Entrancer is blocked by any creature, gain control of that creature at the end of combat. Great, so how are you going to use it if they know it's on the battlefield? Well, you flash it in. And using cards like Winding Canyon from Weatherlight allowed me to do this a lot in my teen years to throw people off, okay? And then finding ways to keep it alive is a little bit harder, but by today's standards, this isn't really hard to keep it alive or even bring it back from the graveyard. So I can see why somebody might be speculating on that card. Keep it in mind, guys. Speculators are out there. They're loving the market right now. Checking out here at number seven is going to be Badlands, Revised Edition. Now, this card, of course at 67 sales, that's a total sales volume of $28,228. The market really seems to be enjoying dual lands as a whole. The sales continue to rise and a lot of cards on the reserve list are getting a lot of a lot of attention again, which we haven't seen for quite a while. And the further we get on the list, the more these numbers start to go up. So if you're a speculator, investor, or a player hoping to get these cards, I hope you're paying attention to these videos. It's not as if we haven't been reporting on this for over a year as these sales kind of slowly are sliding up. But with a card like Badlands or any of the dual lands, we're still finding people looking for heavily played, moderately played. They're avoiding the high-end ones that are in really mint shape, the command, the top dollar. They want playable copies for commander, specifically commander, guys, okay? I know where these cards are going. It's very obvious when you see the sales volumes. Buying one of something over and over tells you it's a commander player. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the next card. 
And here we have Savannah, another dual land, jumping in there. And you can see here at $317, it's a lot cheaper than Badlands. 71 sales is pretty respectable. But not only that, it's still $22,000 plus in sales volume. This one here actually had a couple of near mint sales, some lightly played, as well as some heavily and damaged copies. What I found interesting here, and I don't report these numbers, you can't add these on because this was a revised one, but a whole bunch of unlimited sold as well as a couple of betas. So there's a lot of volumes moving in particular in Savannah. I think it's because it's the, one of the cheaper end, low end dual lands to buy. So either way, it takes notice that this card had a lot of sales volume, a lot of action from players buying it. Now our next card is totally out of left field. Didn't expect to see it here. Anvil of Bug Garden. This thing from Visions has had a lot of play in the past. This thing was over, I think, the $160 US mark, and now we find it in the $34 range. $2,610 in sales volume, 76 sales this week. So what are we talking about when we see this card? You can see it's a cheap casting cost artifact that's generic. It says each player skips his or her discard phase. During each player's draw phase, that player draws an additional card and then chooses and discards a card. We used to use this with Library of Lang to discard to the top of your library in case you actually didn't want to get rid of cards. This thing has a lot of playability when you mix it in with a whole bunch of other drawing mechanisms that shouldn't be underrated, but the price is. So I can see why players might be specking on this card or finally picking up a couple of copies because it's not a big dollar item to afford right now. It makes perfect sense to me. I just didn't expect to see it this week on the board. So our next card, Copy Artifact, the original bio card from about five weeks ago uh, that kind of started things off. It still has 93 sales this week. That's $7,682. When we did the first bio, this card was already starting to spike up, but there was copies that sold for 12 bucks. So this card has 6 x its money since then, okay? I still expect this to calm down. The sales are slowing. Um, and it is a whole bunch of people buying now the moderate to light played copies because all the heavily and damaged copies are not really on the market. I've even seen a couple of unlimited sell. But this card, I just don't see at this price point how it's going to stay this high. So if you're thinking about buying the card, hang in there. Don't. Don't jump into something. Don't let FOMO grip you. Let the price settle down. It shouldn't be jumping up this high right now. Over time now, this thing's going to slowly drift back down. The money's been made. Let's let things slide back to normal. But let's take a look at number three. Number three is a bit of a surprise here. Again, it's Wheel of Fortune from Revised. But what got me this week was the sheer number of sales volume, okay? We haven't seen this card hit this high in a long time. You can see the price is drifting up. It's now over from the 299. It's all the way up to 305 bucks. But the 120 sales runs the gamut from near mint all the way down to damaged copies, okay? Only a couple of damaged I could find, a whole bunch of heavily played, players trying to get a little bit cheaper. It's still $36,000 of sales volume on the list this week. And for a revised card seeing this much action at this time, I'm not too surprised because this one does get played a lot as it's just a splash of red, fits into a lot of decks, as well as eternal formats, kind of like when we're talking like vintage, legacy, kitchen table magic, but it is people buying the real deal and they're buying whatever they can afford at the best price. Keep that card in mind. Now let's drop down and take a look at number two. This one is definitely on the heels of what we saw from Modern Horizons 3, the price check and everything going on. I'll cover more of that on Monday. This thing had 134 sales, guys. It is on a whole bunch of wish lists and it seems to be getting a lot of attention. Now, if you bought this card when it was 40 bucks, good for you. If you bought it at 20 bucks, even better. I did mention it about six months ago. I remember buying a couple here for the channel, for the patrons, for the giveaway box, and it was really a reasonable price. It's definitely drifting up. It's been going higher in price, and after this weekend, you probably expect it to go up a few bucks more. Again, that's just on speculation of things like Bloomboro, as well as Modern Horizons 3. This card here, again, I love it. It's amazing. I just don't see it holding this price right now. I'm not trying to be negative on the card. It's amazing. But when you know it's drifted down in the past when things calm down, you wait another, you know, six, seven months, it's going to drift back down unless there's some reason that it should be that high, okay? There's just, there's still a lot of supply out there. It shouldn't be that price. But let's check out number one this week. Number one, Deranged Hermit, and it's the exact same reason as you have a Maya Hollow. 154 sales. This is the same reason we saw Toski selling all this stuff. $42. This thing's drifted up quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Now, this card here, the whole squirrel thing is amazing. 
I think it's hilarious. It's great to have an armada of squirrels. But the idea that this card was once 175 bucks and now you can still get for under 50 means it's still reasonably be priced for what it's going to do for you. But in terms of games, it's going to be played mostly in Commander. And that's just the way it's going to stay. I don't really see this thing in eternal formats. I haven't seen it at kitchen table in like 20 years. But I have seen it in Commander played very effectively. So I think that's where a lot of these sales are being backed onto. So either way, the sales are there to justify why people are buying it. I just think, again, like last time with Modern Horizons 2, it's all going to slow down after this set comes out. But we're going to keep reporting on this card and see if it holds up week over week. Let's do the wrap up, guys. Many players take the reserve list as a barometer of the health of Magic the Gathering. Old school cards are usually bought and sold at a premium price when things are getting really hot, when the market's lighting up. And right now, with the sheer volume of sales that we see going across the reserve list, I can tell you right now, I had to cut off the day's counts. I could not go into the next day like I normally would. These videos usually go one day longer because I have an extra half day to do the counts. But there were so many cards I was counting I had to end things early so I could do the final tallies to put this video together. Now, a lot of these cards are low end reserve list cards. They were 10, 15 copies across a whole, like everything from didgeridoo to uh, mystic decree. There was a whole bunch that didn't make the list, but they made me count because the volumes got high enough to actually justify me at least looking closer at them. This is interesting. When the market does this sort of thing, when reserve list cards like dual land start working their way up, there's a lot more noise. And I did warn people about this about three weeks ago. That video I said, you've been warned. Because when you look at the sales volumes, already in some cases, cards have rebounded to such a degree that if somebody bought or sold 10 or 12 copies, it could be hundreds and hundreds of dollars in the seller's favor that wasn't there before. This was a buyer's market, and it still, for the most part, is. It's way ahead of what we saw even a year and a half ago, for sure. But at the same time, with prices just kind of slowly rising on so many cards and with the sales volumes getting to the point we have, there's a whole bunch of videos I did back in the day called supply and demand videos where the lower the supply went, but the demand stayed consistent, but there weren't people selling. That's what drove the price up. When sellers and buyers meet in the middle, everything's hunky dory. The sellers are selling cards they no longer want. Buyers are getting a decent price, but when the scales don't level out, when players say, I'm not selling that card, I don't care. It would have to be like triple the value it's at because there are a lot less cards out there than people really realize. I've been doing this a long time and I see a lot of these cards go up for sale and I'm seeing so many less right now that it's a little bit freaky. Not saying they're going to run out. I'm just saying a lot have not come back on the market space and stores aren't buying the way they used to. They don't have the cash flow. It's not the same economic world we're in right now. So keep your eye out there because if these are cards you're looking for and if new players are starting to notice these cards, and I know they are because I'm getting emails about how to use some of these reserveless cards in Commander. And yes, in some cases, the Mox Man's not as knowledgeable. So yes, I've directed these players to, to YouTube content creators who know a lot more about the gameplay side of things and have played Commander a lot longer than I have. I've given them a whole litany of channels. You guys know which ones to go check out now because sometimes the Moxman doesn't know. I focus more on the finance side of things and I'm a casual player who enjoys a lot of these formats, but I'm not competitive level anymore. Still, I'll give you a run for your money. Give me a chance. Anyway, thanks a lot guys for hanging out. Thanks for being here on the channel. And before I go, one last thing about Thunder Junction. There was a whole bunch of cards that got bought over the last two days when I did the counts. They did not make the top 10 on Saturday, but it, I'm going to tell you right now at the end of this video, it was Oasis and Desert, but Arabian Nights ones specifically. Arabian Nights versions of Oasis and Desert seem to have some speculator <laughs> playing Pac-Man on them, okay? Because there's too many, like 80 sales. Who's buying 80 at one time? speculator but just so you guys know somebody thinks something's going to happen in thunder junction that will utilize cards like this so keep an eye out i've given you my two bit cents worth and guys have a great day thanks for stopping by the channel don't forget if you're buying any of these cards use my affiliate link it's in the description it's free to use helps the channel free cards for the channel it's awesome i'll see you guys soon have a great day 
A big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons we have on the channel and to the new patrons who just joined the channel. I will be updating this page more as I have time, so bear with me guys as we go through this upgrading process together. Without these patrons though, daily uploaded content is not possible, so thanks again to all my supporters. Okay, you're here at the Ramble Jamble. You want to know about that desert and that oasis, don't you? Okay. This person probably didn't think I was going to catch him because a lot of these sales aren't on TCG Player. A lot of those are local level across a whole bunch of different stores. But when a store says, I sold 10, I sold 6, I sold 5. I even sold ones from Time Spiral, man. They bought everything I had. Somebody did it online. There's a wish list here with somebody looking for 10. 10, 10, 20, 10. Nobody looks for 10 unless they're speculating when it's an Arabian Nights card. Nobody. I haven't seen that since 2022 buyouts. Crazy stuff. But here, we're at the Ramble Jamble. No edits. We're just saying it as we see it. Another thing is Shieldred the Apocalypse. Did not make the top 10. And no, I didn't have time for an honorable mention because there was just too many card counts to go over to verify numbers. I didn't get a chance. But Shieldred is selling way more than, it, than, than she should. Okay, it's such an expensive card. Orcish Bowmaster almost made the list. It is just a lot of money. And it is tax season, don't forget. There is a lot of money slushing around out there for reserveless cards in particular. Mox Diamond is still on the hit list on a whole bunch of wish lists if people have heavily played copies. Like people are looking for it, they just don't want to pay top dollar. And and also people are looking for like alpha icy manipulators. Interesting, right? Crazy stuff out there. Anyway, you've hung out here long enough. Go do something productive with your day. I gotta go take a brother-in-law out for a Mandarin lunch. Yeah, I'm going to eat some chicken. <laughs> I'll see you guys tonight, the live stream. Live stream!